but I had nothing to eat for 26 hours. And after the initial hunger, I was absolutely fine. David, how did you find carnivore? Well, it, it was at the end of a a bit of a search, really. I, I've, I've struggled with my weight for years, really. I used to be fit and active, used to climb mountains every other weekend in North Wales and the Lake District in England. Um, and that sort of kept me fit, you know, carrying a heavy rucksack, camping up in the mountains. And it was when I stopped doing that, but carried on with the eating and the social life um, that I, I got quite a bit of weight gain. Um, I also bought a car around that time as well, which meant that I wasn't walking to the bus stop and I wasn't walking to the shops as much, and it, it just compounded. Um, yeah, so I started in the late 90s doing the Atkins diet. That that got there was that re-emergence of that. And that worked really well for me. And I did quite well with that, except that it allows a certain amount of carbs within that. And then carbs make you eat more carbs. And so I just kept falling off the wagon. Um, so that wasn't really working for me. Although, you know, it, it, you know, I've done a chart. I've actually got a spreadsheet up from starting in October 28, 2018. Um, and I can see, I've, I've even done a graph on it, and it, it is, it's yo-yoing um, quite a bit from Atkins and then falling off the wagon and Atkins and falling off the wagon. And I was getting desperate. I went virtually vegan. When I say virtually vegan, apparently, um, according to my wife, cheese is life. And so it, that was the one thing we couldn't give up. And also all the all the horrible milks just a appalling in coffee. And um, so we couldn't we couldn't go quite that far. And also eggs, as you know, we're never going to give up eggs. But we tried really hard, you know. I, I pushed. I, I throw myself into stuff, you know. Like right, I'm committing to do this. I'm I'm going for it. And then you know, I've got this thing. I've got a thing. The vegetarian started, and I I gained, um, I gained a stone and a half. So what's that? Like ten kilograms. I'm trying. I've got it all in pounds and whatever here. So I'm trying to work it out. So about twenty odd pounds just by being vegetarian um because of course you know eating crisps and breads vegetarian isn't it so you know so you start, i'll have a crisp sandwich brilliant it's vegetarian um so that really wasn't helping and then i got to a point where i thought well i've tried everything and in my simple head i'm thinking well we're just like a battery you know we're storing fat up to be used at a later date so I thought, right, I'm just going to stop eating for a bit. So I started fasting on the on the third of January, 2022, and um, and then I got I was started looking at YouTube videos about fasting, and um, so I was about I was a two hundred and sixty two pounds, one hundred nineteen point one kilograms, and I just got desperate and that's what I was doing. So I was looking at YouTube about fasting and trying to find out how safe it was and whatever. And I think I came across, um, first of all, Paul Saladino talking about carnivore diet. And then he was into, you know, like, like a lot of YouTubers, you interview people. Um, and saw his interview with someone else. So I, thought, I, I looked at their stuff. And I think there was something with Ken Berry and Anthony Chafee. And and then Paul Saladino, bless him, went off and started his alternative food stuffs, um, which is fine if you've got right down to your weight and you're built like he is and can run along the beach every morning with his lifestyle. Brilliant. But some of us, mere mortals who've got problems with it you're not you're not going to be oh i'll just dip my strawberries in honey and everything's fine so 
I, I sort of put that to one side and thinking, well, this meat thing, I like the idea of that. Any excuse to eat meat, brilliant. Um, so I started that and then my weight plummeted. I've got a downward curve for such a long time. So I went from this 119 kilograms to 96 kilograms within um wow that's uh within within the year you know that was up to i started i started carnivore on the 2nd of march 2022 so that was that exactly two years ago um and i got down to 96 kilograms by the 10th of december and then from then um i have put a bit back on and um I'm not quite sure why or how or whether a bit of social life and holidays crept in and, you know, I've had an ice cream on the beach and that goes into something else and the occasional meal that isn't pure carnivore. It's hard to be strict. I don't have any underlying health issues where I've got pain or problems or, you know, that necessitate me to be on it or I'm in lots of pain. So, I'm just trying to do the best I can. I'd like to work out why I'm putting weight on again, but um, I'm thinking I'm probably just eating too much meat. Um, that could be part of it, and I just don't need it, and I need to just cut that out. So, yeah, that's where I started, and and, and my journey was pretty, pretty easy, really. Just bought meat, ate meat, lost weight which was great. And I noticed, you know, so many benefits from that. Like I did have pain in my knee. Um, I can, I've got a, I've got a nine year old daughter. I can run around the park. I can outrun her now, not just in speed, but for, for length of time, I, 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 you know, I can outdo her now. And I couldn't before I, I couldn't even have got into a run. Um, so the things like that, um, my gum health when i've been to the dentist now you know when they prod you with that thing it i don't have any gum disease yeah i did before you know they were they were saying you've got you know you've got serious gum disease you need to you know all the things flossing and blah 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 like that that's gone so no one's remarked on that at the dentist they haven't, they haven't looked they haven't gone ah it used to be this and now it's this what have you been doing you know no one's interested um uh yeah i haven't been to the doctors in about 10 years so i've no idea what anything is uh, i'm not fascinated by knowing what my blood work is it seems to be quite a big thing for some people in some countries they they tend to know the minutiae um i don't really know i haven't died yet you know but you're feeling good right yeah, I'm feeling better. I didn't. I I I did suffer from COVID. Hit me a bit because at the time I was contracting, um, and I wasn't in a contract when COVID hit, and so I didn't work for two and a half years, which and not going out and not socialising was was uh, quite difficult. Um, and I noticed that when I started on. When I started on Carnivore, I also started a new contract and, and the brain fog lifted, the depression lifted. I didn't even know I was depressed until I came out of it. But according to my wife, it was fairly obvious. Um, but uh, yeah, so yeah, I feel great on it. I feel great on it. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to promote it. I mean, even last night I was chatting to my, a friend who lives in the States and he just thinks I'm an idiot. And, uh, and I've, I've tried to explain. It's just that no, no, you're not gonna, you're not gonna try and persuade me to eat meat. You gotta have this diet. You gotta do this. You gotta do that. You know, you really don't. But you know, he's not gonna have it. So when you ju just uh, as an aside, when you talked about a new contract, um, yeah. are you doing some kind of IT work or something like? Yeah, that, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, just uh, the fact you've got everything in a spreadsheet uh, made me feel like, oh, you're very organized. Maybe you're in some kind of IT role, like project management or something. And in fact, that role was a project management role, but I hadn't done that for about 10 years. But um, yeah, normally I look after uh, financial finance systems. 
you know, how are you eating at the moment? You said just meat. So yeah. is it just meat or is it meat and eggs or? Oh, meat, eggs, cheese. In fact, to, to try and establish what, um, what was happening with this, this weight gain last Friday, I started wearing a constant glucose monitor and I wore it for about four, five days. And during that time, I thought I'd give myself a proper test. So the first test was a gin and tonic. Um, and that did nothing, just nothing, not even registered. And my wife wanted to step that up and said, right, have full fat Coke. Um, so I had a rum and Coke, nothing, <laughs> didn't register. Um, the first thing that registered was a bag of hula hoops, which are like potato chips um and um and a sausage roll with sausage meat wrapped in pastry that took me right up out of the comfort level on the you know it's got this green band of where it was i mean it dropped straight back down again you know it, it was up and then came straight back down again but yeah and i tested it with quite a bit of cheese uh meat and the uh, just none of that registered and eggs so i i eat i eat i pretty much eat red meat I eat steaks. Um, I eat mince, beef. Um, I'll eat some chicken, but not much. Um, eggs, cheese, some yogurt. Um, I do have a small amount of milk, and that's probably that's probably where I am. Mm. And um, is that once a day, twice a day? it varies it varies on my willpower social circumstances do you know after 50 years of eating at meal times breaking that habit is so difficult so you know i'm sitting at work and everyone's going out for lunch or eating their lunch at the desk and you uh, might as well so there's a there's a great company uh, there's a great company in the UK that's doing um, beef crisps. So they're, they're I, I know there's a company in the states that does them, um, but you can't get those in the UK. So there's this this company. Um, I don't know if I can say the name. Are you happy with that or? Yeah, they're called Protomars, um, and they do beef, chicken, and pork crisps, and they're just thin slices of dried meat with very little on them there's a bit of salt and pepper or something but there's very little so i'll have a bag of those for my lunch and then a steak at night i very rarely have breakfast i'll have a coffee in the morning and that's that's about it funnily enough the coffee with milk spiked the glucose a little bit not out oh. of the, the green band but just a little bit so I had a black coffee following that. When I settled back down again, I had a black coffee. That was absolutely fine. So I know that I've been drinking a lot of milk recently. So that might be what it might be the lactose in the milk that uh, is, is elevating my sugar levels a bit. Okay. And so when every day you're eating these uh, beef crisps at work, yeah. what, what kind of reaction do you get from your colleagues? Um, oh, they take the mickey out of me for my views, and uh, it's some people are interested, some people talk to me as if I'm the nutter on the bus. Um, they just oh, okay, right, you cack on then, you know. It's and and people have asked me, and I I died. I don't know how many of this community we just want to go tell the world of everything that we're doing. Um, and, you know, if people show a modicum of interest, I'll, I'll warn them that I could bore them for days without taking a breath. Um, some people are interested. Some people, oh, I just couldn't do it. I like my bread. Oh, I couldn't go without pasta. And you just say, oh, okay. <laughs> There's no point in continuing here. <laughs> Um, yeah. some people have shown a little bit of interest um but very few mm. i've got a friend who who funnily enough i started on it much the same time as he did um which is great to have have a have a pal along the journey 
um, who understands it and gets it. Um, that, that's really quite useful. Wow. So, and how about your wife? Is she doing this with you? No. She, um, bless her, is five foot eight. She's on the low BMI chart and she can eat for England. She has no concerns with weight, health, whatever. You know, feels a bit hungry. She'll bake a cake. <laughs> you know, it's just she gets away with whatever she wants. I mean, she stops eating when she's full. And that's what I think a lot of people who are overweight's problem is we've forgotten to detect that point where we're full to stop eating. Yeah, I'd, I'd be eating yeah. the whole cake and then looking for more. Well, I bought a bread maker in, I don't know, it was 1999. I bought a, a bread maker and I would bake a loaf of bread on a Saturday morning and it'd be lovely and smell nice. And I'd, I'd wait until it had cooled enough so I could cut it. And then I'd butter a slice up and oh, I'll have another one. I think I have to put another loaf on. I've nearly eaten this one. And then, you know, that's like two loaves. And yeah, there's no stop. There's no stop button. <laughs> sounds sounds very familiar yeah. yeah so she she gets away with it she doesn't really like red meat so i i sneak it into i do most of the cooking in the house so i sneak it into her food so i i, I make stuff that is high meat content um she gets a lot of bolognese um lasagnas and stews and you know, there'll be a there'll be a roast chicken tomorrow for dinner. Um, so, you know, I, I, I try and push it. The snacks, I try and get meaty snacks in for my daughter because I think it's important to move away from any sugary or high carb snacks for her while she's growing up. So I'm trying to influence. But it's hard when, you know, every reward is a meal out or sugar or alcohol or you've done really well let's go out for a meal or you've achieved this let's go for a meal. well if i go to a restaurant and order a steak you know you, you're paying three times as much for a steak and that's all you get on a plate for, for the cost of where you would be getting vegetable chips and yeah, 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 all of that and then it's a steak i have one of these at home for a third of the price and cooked how i like it you know, it's no, it's no reward to go out for dinner. And that's part of the social thing, isn't it? I mean, what do you do when you want to go to the pub with your mates and what do you drink? You know, oh, I'll, I'll just have some water, please. You know, <laughs> and the barman looks at you like, you're not giving me any profit here. You know, I mean, sometimes when they, they broach the conversation, so look, I don't, I don't want anything with sugar in it and I don't want anything with alcohol in it what have you got mm. and they haven't got anything mm. i mean there's yeah. non-alcoholic beers but they're quite carby so yeah. you know what do you do for a social life when you're trying to fit into this diet it's 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 difficult yeah and like if you're sitting there with your water do you get a bit of stick from your friend and from your mates uh no absolutely uh. not funnily enough no i mean they're, they're pretty good oh, yeah nice. um and the other thing is um um I, I i'm not i'm not one to be swayed by peer pressure i haven't mm. i haven't got an ego fragile or otherwise so you know it doesn't it doesn't really bother me mm. but uh, it just it just you are aware that you're different in that situation yeah and you know sometimes <laughs> you have to give in just uh just to join in occasionally so you know one weekend mm. a quarter if we're going out we'll maybe i'll join in but yeah so you you talked about the um you had put on a bit of weight recently so mm. you're basically at the moment you're carnivore but you're also kind of in test mode you know like i'll, I'll try and take this out and see if it has an effect that kind of thing yeah yeah so I'm, I'm 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 removing milk now and i think i've got to just stop eating the quantity i had got down the thing is i'd got down to one meal a day and that's sort of when the weight gain came on which 
I don't know why. You know, I'm just trying to fathom it out. I, I'm unsure. You know, I'm unsure as to what's happening. I, I probably, I don't know whether I need to keep a food diary and just follow exactly what I'm eating. Um, but I can't think why I'm gaining weight unless I'm slightly more sedentary. I, I, I think I think it I think it is down to just quantity of food now. What what would make you go back? What would make you kind of give this up and and leave carnivore behind I, and go back to the pastas and whatever? I don't think I could. I don't think I could, Dave. Um, this is one. It's such a convenient thing. <laughs> I can just cook a steak. If I go camping, I, I ride a motorbike. I go camping on a motorbike. All you got to do is hit a butcher's on your way through the last town of the day before you find your camping spot, get a steak, cook a steak. And I know I'm good. I mean, I went to France, down to the south of France on my bike last year. And on the way back, um, I hit a, a French public holiday. And I went to a campsite in the middle of nowhere where there were no restaurants, shops or anything. That that I didn't eat for 26 hours. I had a few cups of red bush tea because I'd got my stove with me. Um, so I had a few cups of tea and a cup of coffee. Um, but I had nothing to eat for 26 hours. And after the initial hunger, I was absolutely fine. And what I should have done is just stayed like that until i was way for thin and then and then started eating again but i reckon i've got a good three months in me <laughs> before i have to start eating again if i did that <laughs> yeah it really is amazing how um when you're when you fast like that at, at the start you can feel hungry but if you just wait it out just an yeah. hour or so it just it just completely disappears right yeah and i think i think I think one of the tricks with that as well is drinking water or salted water. Um, oh, the other guy that I didn't mention when I was mentioning all these uh, YouTubers, Dante Farino. Have you come across him? He's absolutely brilliant. And, and I mean, two years ago, he was a little way through starting his journey. And I, I he was just brilliant because he was just a bloke doing it. And whatever the results are, I'm going to show you. And I found him to be inspirational. He was great. Absolutely brilliant guy. Um, yeah, and some of the stuff that he tried, like he starts talking about, oh, there's, you know, needing some iodine in his diet and needing some of this in his diet. And there's, there's a few things I thought, well, I'm all right for that. But that one sounds interesting. I'll have a go at that. And he was making up a salt solution where you'd pour a little bit into your water every day or every glass of water and i did that for a while and i've stopped doing that and i don't know whether that might be required again because I've, I've recently started getting cramp at night again um so that's a weird one isn't it the old leg cramp that's it's yeah weird how that uh, I, I mean i i would i would go first to see the first culprit as lack of salt you know like yeah. I, I use so much salt now. I just don't experience leg cramps ever. Yeah. Well, anymore. I'm I'm taking um I take uh I take a vitamin D for because during the winter I always take vitamin D. A pharmacist got me on it. I was working on a contract about six years ago in a basement for two years, and the pharmacist just said you need to be getting some big vitamin D back in you. Um, so I started taking that over winter every year. I take um a vitamin b12 which i'm only taking this one pack of vitamin b12 just to get my brain health back up because i just want to top up from whatever i've missed from a poor diet over the past years and once once i've done that then i'm hoping there'll be enough in what i'm eating so i've got this electrolyte which has got um all sorts in it but there's one thing in there that helps you absorb vitamin magnesium if magnesium helps you absorb vitamin d or you know and then there's something to help you absorb the magnesium in there so i'm taking one of those in the morning and then a normal electrolyte at night so i'm hoping that i'm getting enough salt i'm salting everything i eat 
but you know i'm still getting the cramp so i'll probably the thing that i've read though and i don't know how true it is that the the sign that you haven't got enough salt in your body is having cramp and the sign that you've got too much salt in your body is having cramp and i uh, think well, well which one which one is it am i am i doing too much am i doing too little where am i you can't it's not that you know you can't have a different type of cramp depending on your salt levels it'd be nice to have a bit of an indicator but yeah you know, it's just... I, i'm not crazy about those trapeze artist measurements you know yeah so one yeah. way or the other is too much or too little um so just to take a step back um you you mentioned how the depression had cleared, but you never knew you had depression. Yeah. So, like, what did it feel like when you realized that it was actually clearing? Like, what was the what was the the revelation? It, it was it was wanting to do stuff. You know, when my wife suggested we went out for a walk, it, yeah, you know, yeah, let's do that. Whereas. She was fed up with me just moping around the house, going, she said, go and do something, go and ride your motorbike, go and have fun, go and see your friends, go and do, them. can't be bothered, can't be bothered, can't be bothered. And it was just that, well, why haven't I been doing these things? You know, I ought to be out and experiencing life. No, that's a big change when you get a shift like that, right? It's suddenly yeah, it like, it, it, I want to go and experience that, things. It was that weight lifted. It really was. It was oh i've been like that i am so sorry why didn't anybody say something and you guess she's going we did <laughs> you know we were saying things. i was telling you to go and see someone about it but you wouldn't do anything because you were depressed and and that's how it is you know for me anyway i mean I, I know everybody experiences it in a different way but i thought i was all right but just it was my miserable side coming to the fore <laughs> you know um rather than my jolly side so but now i know that i was in that position whether i could spot that happening again i don't know um i would hope that i'd be more aware now um of, of slipping into that so i could do something about it but but the so, carnivore thing really did help with that for someone watching that's been thinking about carnivore they might be thinking well this sounds all a little bit too good to be true like you don't have to eat all the time. It helps you with your depression. It helps you with weight loss. It helps you with brain fog. It helps you with all these things. Yeah. What? How could you explain it to them to make them kind of understand? Well, it is a thing. It does sound too good to be true. It really does. However, it is true and it does work. It is. It is like a miracle cure except if you see if you if you have a look around at some of these other youtubers like sean baker and and paul mason and his work that he, he does looking at all the research and stuff and it is it is happening in it and, and there's so much evidence like you know all of your interviews so many people are getting benefits from him it is too good to be true but it's and that's why the mainstream don't believe us is because it it does seem too good to be true but it just works it just works and it's easy i mean i can understand um it can be a little bit expensive i mean i'm quite a fortunate position where i work my wife works i can i can go to the butchers and buy a chunk of steak and i cut it up myself into whatever size steaks i want um and he knocks a bit off because i'm buying a big piece of meat um but when i wasn't earning i was eating um minced beef just the the fattiest the fattiest cheapest minced beef from the supermarket you know i've tried all sorts um and and eggs and and you feel so much better for it i mean the thing to do is is just try it you know after after your your keto flu after a few days the second week onwards it's just it's like it's just amazing it's just amazing and you it, it's like going back to your teens and how how good you felt in your teens 
just as you were talking there, I had a bit of a thought, and I'd like to know what you think about this. Um, I think we've got like so used to miracle kind of changes only happen if you take a pill and then that fixes things up. We got so used to that that when we hear that you can like change so many things about your life without taking a pill or without some kind of on-off switch thing just by just by changing the way you eat it, that's one of the things that makes it feel so hard to believe i think also people people feel they need to be um buying something or spending money or have some sort of intervention in order for it to be we, we're in such a material world now to quote madonna um that we need a thing you know we need some equipment or you know there's a guy i know who's buying an under desk treadmill i'm thinking just stop eating rubbish just stop eating rubbish it's far cheaper than buying something not buying something and eating it is far better <laughs> than buying something that isn't going to solve your problem the other thing is there's this um the, the guy I was talking to last night was, I said, I was just trying to suggest watch these guys on YouTube. They're all making money out of it. They all own meat farms. That was his first thing. They're all making money out of it. Whereas this is the one thing where all these guys are showing really healthy. You'll be great. We're getting nothing out of it. You know, and yeah. you just go, well, no, no one, unless Anthony Chafee owns my local butchers in Cockgrave. You know, <laughs> I don't think he does. I've got um, a feeling he doesn't. Yeah. It's, uh, that, that's the thing. It's great to be able to be like bigging up something where, you know, we're saying, yeah, yeah, I'm not selling you anything. Yeah. Just, just go yeah. to your butcher, you just know, or go just to the supermarket. Yeah. Just, just, just do this eggs, beef, bit of cheese mm. if you can. Yeah. Um, just I was la I was laughing before when you said your friend bought the under under desk treadmill because yeah. if that was me, I bought an under desk treadmill and it stay under the desk, well and truly under the desk. It never come yeah. out. No. Um, it's, so, it, but it's one of those things people are prepared to. Well, I'll spend all this money, you know, I'll spend hundred hundred pounds on buying this thing, whereas just buy a hundred pounds worth of steak. That'll keep you going for a couple of weeks and test it out. Give it. A, I've even said to a guy, I will pay for your first two weeks of steaks. I will buy those for you. Give it a go. No, no, I like my chips too much. Uh, you know? but I, I think I, I think that what you're talking about it seems to be that marketing thing of you value what you pay for. Mm. You know, so it's like, you know, well, I've there's this black box solution that I can buy. So I value that much more than just hearing like, you don't have to buy anything. Just go to the shop and get meat and eggs, you know. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. it is that thing. It, it we, We've been we've been brainwashed into societal procession, haven't we? We've been mm. uh, our views have been narrowed in that this is the way we achieve something by buying it. I mean, membership of a gym, you know, just go for a walk, go for a run. Why Why do people go to the gym to run on a treadmill? I mean, everywhere's got a street or a road or a – why? It's like, it, I don't know, there was that meme going around years ago of, of that gym that had escalators going up to it. And you just <laughs> say, well, what's that about? You know, why have you got escalators yeah. going up into a gym if you're going to go in and work out? I remember one of my neighbors getting really angry one time because like they, the gym that was near our apartment building, they closed it down and moved it a few streets away. And he was really angry because he was going to have to drive to it. And I'm like, just walk to it. Just walk to the gym. Um, but it's the, the irony is lost sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But um, that's, that's the way we are in society now. We're, we're, so many people are waiting to be fed the next solution or the next thing or 
jump on the next the next thing that's coming along that we've been told to do um and and people have stopped thinking for themselves and taking responsibility for themselves so if one of your friends said to you now okay david i'm gonna try it how do i get started tell me how to start what would you say uh don't eat anything except meat eggs and dairy and, it, and find out if you can i mean obviously some people have a thing about eggs some people have a thing about dairy if that doesn't suit you then then cut that out but just start doing that just start eating meat that's it's what i did i just stopped everything else if you live alone i think if you live alone it would be so much easier because i would rid my house of everything else i'd have so much cupboard space in the kitchen if it didn't have all cake making stuff <laughs> and and flour and bags of sugar and tins of tomatoes and tins of beans and you know you just say just get a fridge fridge full of meat and a freezer full of meat happy days it'd be so much easier but yeah i'd just say to them start doing it just start stop everything else don't drink anything except water i'm i'm fine with tea and coffee it, it worked for me drinking one coffee a day i'll either have one proper coffee a day or two cups of instant um depending on where i am when i have it um i drink red bush tea which is decaffeinated anyway there's no well there's no caffeine in it um and i've stopped taking milk in that because i think the milk's but but no fizzy drinks you know all of that cut that out try not to drink alcohol for as long as you possibly can because i noticed on my on my weight loss chart um i i would get a nice line coming down the chart of weight loss and then if i had like a gin and tonic on a friday night then it would take three days for my weight loss to start again uh, it's quite interesting um i didn't go back up but it, it stopped it stalled for three days um so yeah that's what i'd say to them just just start now just just get on it what have you got to lose if you don't like it after a month then you haven't lost anything but you will like it after two weeks mm yeah uh, uh, after two weeks like you're almost sold right yeah. it's I'd, I'd, like yeah i i i sometimes eat other stuff and it's not often but i'm never coming off the carnivore diet it's going to be my mainstay you know occasionally you're in a social situation and you have to i won't eat cakes you know there's still some things i just won't eat but but on the whole you know after my testing session last weekend of just trying loads of stuff to see what happened with the constant glucose monitor i i know i know i don't want to ever come off this diet or this way of way of eating you know way of life really nice and that's um you know that that should be the biggest proof for anyone that's asking about it you know the people yeah. that are on it don't want to don't want to come off there's just yeah. you just feel so good about your you, yourself you just feel good in yourself there's there's boundless energy you know i don't get tired as much you know i don't get I, I went out for a long walk. I, I had a holiday a couple of weeks ago and, and I did a coastal walk and I haven't been out walking for a long time. And I was shocked at how much energy I had. I mean, I ached afterwards, but I didn't ache for as long as I would have done had I not been on the carnivore diet. Um, but while I was walking, I, I didn't get tired. You know and i was i was walking up some the only things that the only things that that slowed me down was was my lungs catching up with me because i was you know i was walking up some pretty steep hills and i had to pause to let my lungs catch up but but i wasn't running out of any strength or um or energy which was great it was it was a, a, a it was a great feeling to to be like that
I have a question for you that is totally random and off topic. Okay. Is that a Mac behind you? Yeah. An old Mac. Got, you'll see there. You'll see I've got um, a G3 iMac, the lamp uh -huh. one. And then ah. the, and then up to the other side of that, underneath the uh, box, there's a, a Mac Classic 2. Yeah, that's a, that's the one that caught my eye because I yeah. remember using one of those back in like the early 90s. Yeah, that's when yeah. I started using Macs in the early 90s. So, David, um, do you have any social media, YouTube channel, anything like that if people want to reach out? No, I don't. I don't have anything like that. No worries. So um, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for the opportunity. It's nice to be able to give something back to the community.